All right, thanks everyone. So I'm Donna Strahan. Um, I'm a product manager at Oracle. Um, I work in the systems team on the Oracle Storage Tech Archive Solutions team. I'm working very closely with Donna Harland, whose job it is to make our hardware, software, and cloud um, work together in an optimized solution. Um, so we, the talk today, it'll be a short talk because I know we're at the end of the day. Um, but it's all about helping you design and manage your long-lived archives efficiently. Um, we'll walk through the key components um, and features of an archive. Um, and then I also just um, will show various architectures that you can do when building an archive. And then um, we'll get started with um, the value of an efficiently designed archive. So an archive that um, is designed well can help you lower your costs because it takes advantage of your existing storage that you might have on site and helps you adapt and add additional storage at lower price points. Um, it helps you improve efficiencies um, by being able to um, adapt user-defined policies to manage your data um, across all of those different tiers of storage. So it's taking away um, that complexity of managing your data. And then lastly, ensuring access, making sure that you can get to your data um, as you're keeping it for 10, 20, or 30 years. Um, or sometimes your case could be you're keeping it forever. And we've heard about the importance of you don't want to lose your large scale um, data projects. Um, so there are features within um, an archive that's designed well that can help protect your data throughout its entire life cycle. Um, and then also, I want to talk about the cloud. We've heard about it a little bit today. Um, it's definitely impacting how you design your archives um, going forward. So these are just a few stats um, about companies who are curious about cloud. They see their business shifting to the cloud, um, as well as um, traditional purchasing of on-premise hardware um, is declining. So, um, having an archive that very seamlessly integrates cloud will be important um, as you're thinking about keeping your data um, for the long term. So um, you can build an archive that integrates with the cloud and at Oracle we have a software that does that. It manages your data on premise, um, whether it's on disk, um, tape or now um, directly to the cloud. Um, so we're giving you that flexibility um, to put your data where you need it, um, whether that's on-premise or a combination of on-prem and in the cloud. Um, so very much giving you that capability to control where you're keeping your data. You can easily tier um, up and add additional storage resources as you need to so you can put data on the object tier of storage as well as to the archive tier of storage of the cloud um, and it will reduce your costs. So you can automatically set policies to move your data between those different tiers. So you can choose the, your mix of storage based on your objectives. Um, whether it's um, cost objectives, you have to switch from the CapEx model to the OpEx model, or um, you're out of storage resources on site and you need to be able to grow quickly and add additional storage, you can put your data into the cloud. Um, if you need to um, reduce your cost, you can go to the archive cloud, um, which at Oracle, that's the lowest cost um, of cloud in the industry. Um, so as I mentioned, Oracle HSM, um, it's an on-premise application that can put your data into the cloud um, and gives you access to that um, tenth of a penny per gigabyte per month. So when you're thinking about your archives and they're growing, um, you can store your data very inexpensively. Um, so for a year, it's $12,000 per petabyte per year. All right, now that we've talked about the value and importance of an archive that also includes cloud um, and addresses today's challenges, we'll walk through the components of an archive. Um, so you have your end user applications, they need to talk to the different tiers of storage, so you have that abstraction software. So that's Oracle HSM. Um, and then you can have your primary disk tier um, where you store your metadata. Um, and then you also have um, you can store um, a copy on disk as well as tape or also in the cloud. 
Um, this is just one example of a solution with Oracle HSM. So you can access it, um, your applications through the standard POSIX interface, so SIFS or NFS. Um, we have two um, servers um, here with Oracle HSM on them for high availability, um, as well as using um, QFS clients, so the quick file system clients to efficiently move your data um, to tape. Again, you can have your data on disk or tape, and that's what's shown in this example. Um, but we have many ways that you can do that. So just to give you a little view of the flexibility um, with this, so you can have your on-premise archive and keep two copies for your data protection. Um, you can also have the hybrid archive. So um, you can have one copy on-premise and your second copy in the cloud as your data protection tier. Um, if you have um, only disk on site, you can then put the rest of your data into the cloud, so that you're all a cloud archive model. A few more examples. Um, you can use OpenStack Swift on the front end to um, create private clouds. So if you um, can't take your data to offsite, you can use that um, to build object stores. Um, you can also have Oracle HSM hosted on site, um, and you can keep your um, data on disk for fast access, as well as um, data in the cloud that you would be archiving for um, beyond two years that you don't need quick access to. It might take a little longer to restore, but you're keeping data there. Um, lastly, you can have um, on-premise um, Oracle HSM um, with a small disk cache and then storing data in both the object and archive storage tiers of the cloud. So we've talked about the components. Let's talk a little bit about the features um, that help you ensure access. Sure. Um, so three important features. Um, automated file fixity. So um, you can use industry standard checksums such as MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, 3D4, 512. Um, and that's maintaining um, assurance that your file is unchanged um, when sent from your application to storage. Um, automated data integrity validation, so that's um, assuring that the data hasn't changed um, after it's been stored for data at rest. Um, and you can set policy-based audits to do that and self-heal automatically. So if you have an error, you can correct from your second copy. Also, keeping data in open formats, um, ensuring that you can access the data for years to come and share it across systems. Um, this is just an example of how this um, works together to protect your data and ensure access throughout its entire life cycle. You can do it on each read or write or set policies to periodically validate it. Um, this is a case study of one of our customers and their architecture. So um, they're using Rosetta in front of Oracle HSM, submitting their own checksum, um, and then storing the data on flash as well as two tape archives and are set up to go to cloud. So um, for data in transit, they're using file fixity, data at rest, um, data integrity validation. And then lastly, just in summary, um, you can manage your archives very efficiently with an software like Oracle HSM um, helps you um, improve efficiencies with your user-based policies, um, lower your costs by seamlessly integrating to the lowest cost archive cloud, and also ensure access with its robust features for data integrity validation. Thank you. Sure. So um, there's standard recall costs, and those are made publicly available. So um, I think it's 0 .005 um, cents per retrieval. Um, one of the benefits to having the hybrid model that I didn't point out is you can recall your data from your local copy, and then you don't have any retrieval cost. So that's a really important um, component to have the ability to have a hybrid solution. Any other questions?